Let's get into LSU project from the double platinum EDM producer Will Spark in collaboration with New World Sound, released from Musical Freedom Records. Simplicity is key in this song. Now let's get to the first section of this tutorial and see what's going on. Here is the formula. A simple square wave, a simple 16th note pattern, and only one note in the drop with some pitch band automation. First let's take a listen to the solo of this synth sound. This is very simple guys. These are only 16th notes and we are just playing one note here. And everything else is just by these automations. The maximum automation right here is three semitones and nothing more. Let's get to the oscillators right here. This is a very basic square wave. I have played a little bit of the fine tune to match it with the original one. I have added seven voices of unison, a little bit of noise, and this is the envelope. Very simple and nothing else. In the FX section, I have added some amount of hard clipping right here. And I have added some drive with the filter with this add bass preset in the miscellaneous add bass. And here, as I told you, the automation that was modulating this pitch band knob was going up for three semitones. Very simple. And the automation pattern is like this. Every two bars, it gets repeated and no variations. And these two automations are going up and down, but this one suddenly goes up, but gradually comes down. Very simple, guys. And here, the mix down again is so simple. There is nothing special going on. I have saturated a little bit of the high end of the sound. Very simple. I bypass this one. And because I have turned down the gain right here, the sound is getting a little bit duller, but a little bit brighter at the same time. Next, I have added this EQ. I bypass this. I'm just evening out the frequencies right here and nothing else. Next, I have added some boost to the mid frequencies with this lovely plugin Fresh Air. I turn this off. Now I turn this on. Very simple. And the biggest plugin for this sound is this PX refinement from Brainworks. I really love this plugin. And in certain cases, it is just this plugin that does the work. This plugin is like SUS2, but it is not focused very much on the dynamics of the sound. And I have added 14 dB of damping right here. I have added a little bit of saturation. The mix knob is at 100%. And I have added 3 dB of presence. I turn this off. This is a huge difference. Super harsh. Especially after adding this trash 2 distortion and this fresh air. But when I turn this on, the sound is controlled. Very nice. And at the end, very simply, I have added some stereo imaging to the mid frequencies of the sound right here. Very simple. And in the group section, I have added Valhalla Room, the lovely reverb with the dry and wet chain. And the preset is golden plate. As we see, a lot of music producers in EDM are using this golden plate preset for their leads. This is very great. But this is a very bright reverb. So after that, I added this EQ and I got rid of the low end and high end of the sound. I solo the reverb for you. I turn off the EQ. This is very important for your mix down because if the reverb was very bright, it had a lot of conflict in the high end with our main lead. Very beautiful. And after that, I have decreased the width of this reverb with this utility plugin. It is at 71%. The default is always at 100%. If you go up, you increase the width of the sound. If you go down, you decrease it. If you have found this video useful so far, please consider liking and subscribing. And of course, this gives me a lot of motivation to make more of this stuff. And also hit the notification bell for all the future projects and breakdowns. Thank you, friends. A beautiful thumping kick with a fat bass line have made this powerful groove for this drop. 
First, let's take a listen to the solo of the bass boss. These basses are very simply just 16 notes again, and it is consists of two layers. The second layer is a soy bass shot layer. I found this sample, and I'm just using it for the middle frequencies of the bass. I got rid of the high end and low end of the sound, and I just wanted these middle frequencies for my bass layers. Very simple. But the first layer is the most important part and this is one of the bases that I have divided up into three octaves minus one octave minus two octave and zero octave. The zero octave is a sine wave minus two is a simple saw wave and here the minus one octave is a very simple sine wave. The most important part right here is the envelope it is an attacky one. Such a fast bass. And because I wanted to give it a little bit more analog and warm feeling, I use this LFO2 right here and I'm modulating this, these fine tunes right here to make it a little bit more analog. Very, very subtle change to the sound. After that, in the FX section, I have added some hyperdimension for the textures and then I have added some tube saturation right here. Drive to the max, mix to the max. I turn this off. The sound is fatter after the saturation. Next, I have added this OTT right here. A very subtle change. It is just controlling the dynamics of the space. After that, the most important element for making a bass sound, and it is this filter modulation that turn this off. The movement is gone. I turn this on, and it turns into a beautiful bass sound. And after that, I got rid of some bad frequencies in the sound that I didn't want. Very simple, guys. And here I have modeled the sound. I have added some saturation to the low end of the sound. I wanted a fat sob out of this bass sound. Next, I have added this frequency shifter, but I haven't used it. I turned this off. We don't want this. After that, this is the EQ, a lot of the body for this bass. This is a very important move for this bass. After that, a little bit more EQ. I didn't want it the highs because the highs of this drop are filled with the main synths and the hi-hats. So there is no bass right here. The bass is just around here from sub, low, mids, and mid frequencies. After that, I added Saturn again. I'm adding highs to the sound. I mean the high, mids, and mid frequencies of this bass. Next, again, I roll off all the highs that this saturation had added to the bass sound. I turn this two off. If you listen closely, the harmonics that are added to this bass after this Saturn plugin are making the bass more melodic. Next, more EQ. I'm a sucker for EQ, guys. Next, I added Saturn, but this time I added the saturation to the whole spectrum of the bass. A little bit of warm tube to the bass. I felt that it didn't have enough drive in the mix. Not a big change, but in the whole mix down, it had a good impact. Next, I added this little EQ. I didn't want this frequency right here. And next, this trash that is turned off. No use right here. And after that, as always, Submarine to add a lot of sub harmonics to my bass to have a very fat sub bass in this drop. Next, at the end of the chain, I added this reverb and you guessed it, guys. I always put room reverb on my basses. I always use this room preset here in the room's tiled room. This is a very good preset and in most cases it is the perfect reverb for your bass sounds. It is at 100% because we have a dry and wet chain right here and that's it guys for this bass. Now this bass is playing very beautifully with this very thumping kick right here. Let's take a listen to the kick and bass in this drop. Very nice. Let's take a listen to the solo of this kick. This kick has a second layer and I felt that we needed a very distorted body for this kick. So I added this layer with a lot of saturation with decapitator. I turn this off. It is really clipping and saturating this distortion layer for the kick and it is very essential to add the power to this drop. And next I added a little bit of EQ to this distorted body. Turn this off. I'm focusing a lot on the body of the kick. And other details in the drop, guys. There is nothing right here. There is a brief sound at the start of the drop to add emphasis on the strong beat of the drop. 
Now let's take a listen in the whole context of the drop. Pay close attention to this brief sound. Spin. Let's begin. Very important in my opinion. Next we have these hi-hats. Very dirty hi-hats. I have added a little bit of high-end to these hi-hats. And next guys, another important element of this drop is this white noise, but it is not a simple white noise. I have added a lot of EQs, but the most important thing about this white noise is this redux effect. Let's take a listen to the solo of this white noise first. Now I turn this redux off. This is a simple white noise that we hear almost in every EDM track. But this redux is making a great character for this white noise. And here is a little bit of automation on this white noise. And it is giving the white noise a little bit of movement. And it is making it less boring in the drop. Pay close attention to this frequency. Now I play you the drop and just focus on the white noise and what it is doing to the drop. I turn the white noise off and the drop becomes very empty in my opinion. energy is lost in the drop without this white noise with the redux effect. And the next important thing is this vocal buzz. Very simply, Will Spark has chopped up some vocals. Let's take a listen to the solo of them with the metronome on. And guys, very simply, Will Spark has used this vocal for the chopping section. And he has put these chops right here, these three chops, down to minus two semitones. But in the first part, he has put this vocal chop at plus one semitone. And it is a great variation for this drop. Let's take a listen in the whole context of the drop. Very simple but very effective. And at the end, he has just copied these vocal chops right here, but he has put a very big high pass on them again to add variation. This is without high pass. This is with high pass. Very thin vocal, and it's perfect for this part of the drop. Thanks for watching, friends. If you have any questions about the tips that we talked about today, just ask me in the comments, and I love you so much. Bye.